plaintiff, Aria Ross, says she and the defendant became friends at age 14, and they bonded because they are both transgender. Aria claims she and the defendant started their transition together, but Aria is suing her former friend for a loan. Defendant Robin Grant admits that he started the transition process, but due to religious discriminations within his family, he changed his mind. Robin insists Aria forgave the loan, so he denies owing for anything. Start with you. Well, I met the defendant and her. Um, I met them both at school. We was like 14, we grew up together in like school. And me and Robin, we both got close because we were both transgender. So we grew up together, like we transitioned together, but I noticed like really early on that Robin wasn't very much so like comfortable with her transition as she is like, like even like today, like I've never seen like, like this, you know, like her, her being presented like this. She usually dressed as a woman, you see? Yeah. Like, Your so. Honor, I disagree because I grew up in a religious family. So of course my parents was not, you know, they wasn't having it. They're discriminatory, you know? right. But you oh, yeah, be a girl in the night and a boy in the day. Go ahead. So, exactly. so you know, there we go again, trying to run my life. So basically I did decide to Stop the transition. Yeah, you because, change your mind. Exactly. Right. You know, stuff like that happens. So I feel like it's not changing your mind. I feel like he's scared. I mean, she's scared because okay, her father is a pastor, and you can't say you changed your mind when just two days ago you all on Facebook with a crooked wig and pink lipstick on. You know, saying you a woman. Your Honor, you can't do that. How are you gonna say it's crooked? Because right, it, okay, if you got a wig like this, is a doable wig. Okay, but how your wig right here? In your part down here, how your wig to the what? How, how, why? No, no, can we disagree that, right now? But well, that is crooked to be. Uh, if it's so like it you described, but you. it and may not it be like you described. It was just like I you described. You had a crooked wig on a regular. I disagree. It I had crooked. a regular, nice, and it wasn't crooked. expensive wig. Let's move on. Let's yeah, move on. Okay, so let's mad move on at, that. Yeah, I'm be mad at his situation. I'm Go not ahead. mad. I just want you to be you. Don't try to run his life. I don't want to. Just as I know the real you. You can't say you want to be. Okay. Okay, so we went out one night, right? And my, we was we was serving real fish, okay? Now, if you don't know what real fish means. You know what real fish means. Real fish <laughs> means, it means like when you're transgender, but you can't necessarily be clocked as being transgender. So like you serving fish, like you, you like look like a regular, you know, cisgendered woman. woman. So one night we go out, we serving good fish. We looking good, we having a good night. I pull up, like we pull up to his house to take him home. This girl, takes the wig off, the eyelashes off, rub the lipstick off, just to go into the door to, to, so his mom wouldn't, you know, see who she really was. I'm you that scared just to be who you are. When I'm trying, he's like, oh, he don't want to be home. It's not of stuff. I offered exactly. this, I tried to put this man into my job. I've given him money. I mean, you can come stay with me. I will what help you. What was your problem uh, what, what, with him doing that? You. With him changing exactly. his appearance, exactly. going into a home you. to avoid any type of exactly. dispute. Well, why should you have to have who you really are? Ask his parents. Please. Ask yourself. Please. Everybody doesn't want to face discrimination all the time. That's true. I don't they just want to live a peaceful life, particularly if society already gives you a problem on do. the outside. They do. So you don't want to go, that should be your only safe haven is home. Thank and you. if he lives with his parents and he wants a safe and peaceful haven, do what you got to do. Because he can't do that in society. Yeah. So that's why he has to do that. And that's unfortunate. That's a bad commentary on society. Getting off my pedestal, but I got to educate you all on one of the most important social issues in our country right now. <laughs> got to educate you all. So we're done with that. Yeah. If he wants to wait or never You're right. express his transition, that's on him. Wait till he's ready to deal with discrimination because that's the essence of it. Mm -hmm. When am I ready to deal with the discrimination that I'm going to get at home? When am I ready to have a dispute and perhaps alienation from the most important oh. institution in America? The family. So he got to determine when he wants to do it. Right. I apologize for trying to force that on you early. I, that was not my intentions. I just wanted to try to help you do what I felt like was help you live your best life. I wasn't trying to hurt you in any type of way, honestly. Okay. Now, okay. see, folks, y'all don't like me lecturing, but you just heard I changed her way. 
I'm going to keep lecture. <laughs> Go ahead, ma'am. Tell me um, about your friendship. How long have you all been friends? Let's start there. All right, we've been friends since ninth grade. And, you know, growing up in Chicago, it was kind of rough. You know, people were not accepting of the trans and LGBTQ community. So we bonded from that because we were the outsiders. We were the outcasts. You know, people would make fun of us, but we would go through it together and not, you know, separately. So. You know, of course, he bonded over that. So what has it been like as friends? She's been a good friend. She's backstabber. A... Okay, so yeah. Gossip. Been... She looked like the gossiping type. Oh, yeah. Much... <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. We have... You I gossip, got a mouth on me. I'm, I'm, huh? I'm, I'm, I got a mouth on me, I will admit. See? I do. I mean, I want my folks. Okay, I agree. The friendship has been, it's been good, but it's had its rocky moments from, you know, what friendship doesn't have its rocky moments. Um, a conversation that we really get into it about a lot is about the transition in the situation and whether or not we should tell men that we are trans and she does not agree with that. So sometimes that has put a damper on our friendship and that's the reason why my witness and the plaintiff aren't friends because of that situation. Can I just so, say though, I feel like I should not have to walk into a room or to like say to random men, hey, I'm Ari, I'm transgender. First off, I'm I'm just me. Like I, I should just introduce myself as myself. I don't know you from a can of paint. I don't know you from nothing in the world. I don't gotta disclose correct. my personal business to you. Correct. And my problem with her is that she, she takes it up herself to sit there and tell my business to me I don't even know and don't even want because they don't they don't want her and they want me okay so your honor do you I'm not saying you need to wear transgender on your forehead but if you are talking to men heterosexual men I feel like it's one point where they would have to know to avoid being attacked to avoid unnecessary drama to avoid all of that she doesn't that's mm. where the problem okay. arrives. So mm. you're really saying mm. that you don't agree with her dishonesty exactly. because yes. one of the effects is that it increases the stereotype yes. and that leads to an increase in violence exactly. by heterosexuals against transgender women exactly. because the stereotype goes that, yeah, a lot of the transgender, they don't tell you. That's what they do. And that's not true. Not that's right. a stereotype exactly. that is applied to the entire transgender community. Go can ahead. I, can I just respond to that? Let me, let me make one thing clear. Like, at the end of the day, my money is very long. So the last thing I'm worried about is chasing some little boys and not telling them who I am. I could care less about that. Because you had to loan him money. So is, let's see it, what happened. $500 that. loan. Tell me about that. Why are you suing him for it? Okay, so one day I get a text message from Robin and she's like, I need some help, I need some money or whatever for my books for school. You know, she was in college, which that don't last. But she was in college or whatever, she needs some money for her books, like no shade. So I'm like, me being like the person I am, I really honestly, cause she was trans at the time, I really want to see all of us win. I want to see us do good. So I'm like, okay, you in school, you don't think I got you. So I met her up at the library. At first she asked me for $300, but then when I got there, she was like, oh, I need five. So. I ain't gonna lie, I was a little hesitant, but I made this collect. I'm letting you hold this. You know, like this is not, you're not having this. This is, you hold this, give it back to me. She said she was gonna give it back when she got her taxes. Long story short, that never came. Tax. That <laughs> never came. You went for the tax game. But my thing oh. is, okay, so after a while, when I saw the money one come out, I'm like, you know what? I only, like, you did it for your school, I ain't go trip. But. Thank you. I found out later on that she never, she never used that money for school. She had dropped out before she even asked me. She took that money and went behind my back and gave it to her to pay for a DNA test for her baby, knowing that me and her were not cool, were not on good, you know, terms or nothing. And that mm -hmm. was not the agreement. I let you borrow the money for your school, for you to better yourself. And you took and you went and you fed my enemy. For what? Like, I don't, I have a problem with that. And I'm like, I want my money back. That's not cool. That's not what we agreed on. Yes. How I feel, if you tell me that the loan that you gave me is forgiven, I'm gonna take it as it's forgiven. We're not gonna go back to that loan because it's forgiven. If you take a loan out for a mortgage and you don't use it for the mortgage, and for whatever reason, the, the creditor tell you, oh, the loan's forgiven, I'm gonna take it that the loan is forgiven. I'm, they're not gonna say, oh, well, you use the mortgage money to, to, to buy a car. That? Okay, I exactly. said that is, but my thing is our original agreement, it was never to hold it, my, to have it. My original agreement, as you can see in the messages, Oh, it's whatever. in writing? Yeah, oh, well, no, we had some oh, text messages when text. he asked me. Something. Okay, because so, in writing, you have to change it which, in writing. You no, know, I should have done that, but I didn't. But my, my- I, But you did tell him later, you don't have to pay me. Exactly. I said, don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about, about it, worry. you don't that, have that, to pay I me. Mean, that <laughs> mean, that mean, don't forget, but don't worry. That no. means, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, for real. 
hell? Like, this is the hardest man is bad. Like, show me where I said you do not have to pay me. Show me where I said Don't let it keep you up at night, but make sure you have okay. my money. <laughs> Your Honor. And she makes a good point, no. too, sir. She told me, I agree that I was going to pay her back around tax season. She said, do not worry about it. I don't recall. In the context, she just said it. I don't recall. In the context. All right. I'm telling you, I'm going to pay it back. Oh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about paying me back. Okay. She has convinced me. I'll just tell you right now. She's con yeah, she convinced has convinced what? me when she said, don't worry. She meant just what she said. But don't before, worry. Before she, she didn't that. say, you don't have to pay me back. She said, don't worry. But if you had hit the lotto or something the next week, you'd think that she wouldn't want her 500? Okay. okay. When it became available to you, you think she wouldn't want her money? Yes, and she would be entitled to it. Now, I'm gonna get back to this. I wanna say to you, this is a big, big, big moment in your life, perhaps the biggest, quite frankly. All right. Because folks watch the show. Your family gonna watch the show. Yeah, of course. They're gonna hear about it. What I suggest is that you hold a family meeting for those most important to you. And just say a family meeting regarding the Judge Mathis television show. Give me a little extra viewership. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And when you're there, say all you're asking them to do is not discriminate against you. And if you all treat me differently, that's the definition of discrimination. That's what I advise you to do, all right? All right. Where do you live? I live in Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. If you would like, because it's so important, it's the most important moment of your life, in my opinion. If you'd like for me to be there, I will. Aww. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Judgment for the plane. Thank After you. Day. Follow up with my producer. Yeah. I haven't talked to him. I can see your tracks. Look a mess. You look a mess, girl. Get it together. Look at that wig. Look at what oh, wig. Look at what wig. wig. You're trash. What you mad? You mad because I won. Right. You mad because right. I won. You look a mess. Sitting over there with your feet, five, four, fun face says, look a mess. 